What's your full name? Omar Sami Marzouk Abu Rusha. Where are you from? I'm from Gaza, from Il Tafah neighborhood. Okay. So before we begin, uh, what's your position? You're from the Nukba, right? The Hamas commandos, yes. And what was your position in the Nukba force? I was a soldier. A soldier. How long have you been in Nukba f uh, for? Between eight months and uh, one year. Okay, I understand. When you infiltrated into Israel, what were the orders that you were given? My mission was simply to kill. Meaning, we, were supposed, we weren't supposed to kidnap people, just kill them. So what were you told? To kill everyone that you saw? Yeah, basically, to kill every person we saw and come back into Gaza. No difference was made between men, women, children, everyone. That's correct. Why kill everybody? What were you told? What was the objective? They told us that all the settlers were soldiers, there were soldiers. So kill everyone that you encounter. Even the women are soldiers? Yeah, they told me all the civilians are soldiers, no distinction. They told you to kill everyone, the women, the children? Yes. So where did you enter in Israel? We entered into Kfar Aza, a kibbutz. And Kfar Aza was your only mission? The area of our mission was, yes, Kfar Aza. And what were you supposed to do after Kfar Aza? I don't know, just, I guess, come back to Gaza, withdraw? To go back to Gaza? I understand. You said your mission was Kfar Aza, the kibbutz. So tell me about what happened when you got to Kfar Aza, after you made it from uh, from Gaza. So we got to the kibbutz, and then we had a guide with us. He wasn't from our team, he had a motorcycle. We were inside the jeep. So we got to Kfar Aza, to the, to the cars. The one on the motorcycle, Mohammed Nader Ab uh, Abisht, he opened the fence on the border of Kfar Aza, the kibbutz's perimeter fence, using an explosive device. So there were our people there, so he opened up the fence for us. And then after we left him, we uh, continued into the kibbutz. We went to the first house. We checked it and there was uh, nothing in there to see. Hamza Azarad burned the exterior room, set it on fire. Okay. Afterwards, someone came out towards the garden in the back with a water hose. Abu Ahmed and Hamza saw him, they shot him and they killed the guy. That's the first thing that occurs. Afterwards, we continued on to the second house. So we fired at the windows, we broke all the glass. We got to the house, we checked it. We didn't find anybody in sight. So I set fire to the bedroom. Myself, personally, set it on fire. Then we went to the third house. And there was a woman inside the house. Hamza killed her, he shot her. So we didn't go into the house. How did they shoot her? The Kalashnikov, where did he shoot her? I didn't see she was standing near the door, near the window. Then we continued. Did she fall? Yeah, she fell. So we didn't go into the houses, we continued. Shooting from the outside, we found another house, we didn't find anyone inside, so we moved on. Afterwards, when we were inside a house for about an hour and a half, we brought a laptop, we turned on the news. We saw. We sat there for about an hour, an hour and a half, and then three settlers came in our direction. Settlers meaning people living at the kibbutz. We saw them, they saw us, and we saw them, so we started shooting. So shooting started. Each one shot towards the other person. I shot at one. I saw him, he had a helmet. Helmet. I don't know, I just saw the top part of him. I shot at him and he fell. Probably killed him. They were shooting back and forth. Abu Ahmad and Hamza threw grenades at them on those two. Hand grenades, yes. They were shooting back and forth. Afterwards, we ran away. The shooting stopped. Okay. We exited through a different door, not the door we'd entered from a different room in the back. We left and we went out to the groves. We hid under trees. We hid there for about an hour and a half to two hours. We stayed under there in the trees and the trees in the grove. Afterwards, we entered a house that was close to us, so we got in through the uh, window. We checked the house and we heard the sounds of young children in the safe room in the mamad. We shot at that safe room. What did you shoot the safe room with? At the beginning we didn't shoot, we just passed by, we didn't hear anything. So we had some dates and we uh, drank water. Afterwards we heard sounds coming from that house of young children. What sounds did you hear? We heard young children crying. Can you demonstrate what noise is so I can understand? The cries of young children, a young child, something like that. Like what? Imitate it, do it. A child crying. Okay. So I shot, and Ahmed Abu Kamil shot, we shot at the door, until when? Until we didn't hear noise anymore. You kept shooting until you didn't hear noises? Yep, we didn't hear any noise at that point. Then the army arrived, they were shooting back and forth with the army, you stopped hearing noise, what does that mean? It means the kids had died in the safe room. Afterwards they were shooting back and forth, 
for about 10 minutes and we surrendered. We turned ourselves into the Israeli army. They came in through the windows. We threw grenades at the army at the door. We threw grenades and the grenades exploded. But after 10 minutes, we surrendered to the IDF. Amr, remind me what your father's name is. Sami. Amr Sami Marzouk Abu Ayoya. And you are from Gaza, which neighborhood? Tafa. And you told me a few days ago that you are in the Nukhba. How long have you been in the uh, Nukhba for? Since when? When did you join? About a year. Before that, I was just a regular uh, platoon member in Al Qassam Brigade of Hamas. There's a tunnel between the neighborhoods. Not in every neighborhood in Gaza, it's under the neighborhoods, but there, there's not an opening to our tunnel network in Gaza in literally every neighborhood. The main system of the tunnels in Gaza, where is that located exactly? There's one to Asama and one to Mahata. That's where the main system is. So can you show me? And what's the connection between the tunnels and the hospitals? Most of the tunnels are hidden in the hospitals, hidden next to or under the hospitals. Shifa, for example, the Shifa hospital, there are underground levels, Hamas tunnels beneath the hospital. And can they be in the underground levels? It's not small, Shifa, it's a pretty big place. You can hide a lot of stuff in there. They're telling us that everyone has a direct supervisor who will stay at his place if something happens and will call him. You said, and so I ask, at the time of the bombings of the Israeli military in Gaza, there was no need to hide in the tunnels, but rather in places the Israelis do not strike. Yeah, for example, medical clinics, schools, hospitals, these are the places that you, Israel, strike. So I understand from your words that all matters concerning medical treatment, clinics, hospitals, We exploited them because you, we knew you wouldn't strike them. And then they, uh, then they won't be killed by the, the Israeli airstrikes, so they can get away. So what do we store there? Explosive, weapons, foods, also medical equipment uh, for the Hamas fighters and the tunnels, the soldiers in the Nukba, as well as the regular uh, al Qassam members. So as I told you, Shifa is safe. It's not going to be struck by the Israeli army. So it's safe. That's, uh, that's what we know, and we exploit that fact. What about fuel? Like I said, first they worry about the machines, the Hamas and their jeeps, and after that they give it to the people. They fill tanks full of fuel for themselves, the Hamas uh, operatives, the terrorists. Another uh, topic, the control of Hamas and Al-Qassam over the people. Can the residents of Gaza go wherever they please, wherever they want, in the Gaza Strip? No. It's forbidden to go into Egypt without the permission first uh, of the Hamas. I want to ask you a question. Is killing chil children logical in the according to uh, Muslim religion, according to Islam? No. What did the Prophet Muhammad say regarding this? He said children are not, not to be involved. So I, I ask you a question. You entered Israel in order to kill as an order of the Nukba from Hamas. Correct, correct. He's saying yes. What's the difference between you and Daesh? ISIS. In the things the interrogator showed me, I, I would say there's no difference here in the things that I was shown. I saw videos worse than ISIS, Daesh. The ones the interrogator showed to me were worse than Daesh. Would your father and mother be proud of those actions you committed? They don't, my parents don't know that I'm part of Hamas. If my father sees me, he will shoot me, he will kill me. Why? Because I did those things. <laughs> 